The new Chinese flu virus. Are your pets at risk? This is what you need to know. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. If you've yet to do so, click there to subscribe, click the link to sign up for notifications. And then when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. I'm sure by now you've heard about this new emerging Chinese flu virus. It has come out of a province in China called Wuhan and it originated in December. Since that time, this virus has now uh, infected over 500 people. Uh, there's been one documented case uh, from Seattle from a person who had traveled to Wuhan province. And there's this kind of overall big worldwide anxiety and fear that this flu virus, which appears to initially have been transmitted from animals to people, is now gonna go to the point where it's gonna mutate and be able to spread uh, direct contact from person to person. It's a respiratory virus, so it's gonna cause signs of you know runny nose, cough, headache, aches and pains, uh, similar to how much of the same signs and symptoms that you would have if you had a flu virus. I actually woke up this morning with a bit of a cough, a bit of a sore throat. Like what? As I'm getting ready to do this video. And not only that, Tula wakes up with a cough as I'm about to do a video on this new human flu virus, which I'm fairly confident your pets are, you know, completely have no risk. You're like, what? I've got the flu. I'm not feeling so great. Tula's coughing. Yikes. Our dogs and our cats can get coronaviruses. Uh, most typically our dogs, if they have a, there's a type of coronavirus and cause mild GI upset, so maybe a bit of diarrhea. Most of the time, at times it is asymptomatic. You're not gonna know that they've had it. Likewise in cats, most of the time if they get a type of coronavirus, can cause mild GI signs, maybe a slight mild diarrhea. On occasion that coronavirus can uh, trigger a, a really strange uh, immune response. It can lead to a really serious cat condition called FIB. But fortunately, um, that's something that seldom happens. And there are obviously different, many different species of coronaviruses. So it just so turns out that this one species of coronavirus, um, which was within an animal population, has since made the jump to people. It is now causing uh, these flu-like symptoms. So what do you do? Do you need to worry about your pets? Personally, I think not, and all the experts uh, are saying exactly the same thing. Uh, that being said, with people, uh, the primary, primary issue has been with people that have sort of weakened or compromised immune systems. They're the ones that are getting especially sick from this flu virus, and then are gonna be at risk of pneumonia, and those are ones potentially can die. So you wanna be doing whatever you can to make sure your, your dog, your cat, has a healthy, functioning, primed immune system, and consider uh, potentially some supplements to ultimately boost that. So what am I taking now? Because as you can hear, that kind of horse-ish throat, mm, not feeling super great. Taking three things, and Tula's gonna be taking the same three things. Little Tula, she woke up this morning, she wagged her tail, gave me a little look, and this is the sound that came out of her. Uh, yes, that's what she was doing for the bulk of, she got up and that's what she was doing this real, coffee, hacky, almost sound like how I might sound if I had kennel cough. First, it's the unpasteurized honey. For Tula, I'm suggesting a dose of about a half a teaspoon per 10 pounds. She's 20 pounds, she's gonna get a teaspoon of honey. She really likes the honey, it's easy to mix it into anything. So that's our first concoction, Tula, the honey. But there's more. Second, there's an especially therapeutic plant called elderberry. So the elderberry berries, uh, when squeezed, produce this lovely purple juice, and it's one of the few things that, that has been shown to decrease the severity and shorten the duration of colds and flus. Tula is going to get one teaspoon of the elderberry. 
Aha, uh -huh, the Quechua. Here's a teaspoon of elderberry mixed into the honey. Okay. Then lastly, there's this herbal tincture here. It's called licorice root. So licorice root is one of the few plants that has been shown to have um, pretty significant antiviral activity, um, as well as being beneficial for coughs. So it's so I got two big properties. As thirdly, it is even antibacterial, regardless of the underlying cause of the cough or the underlying cause of uh, some of those flu-like symptoms. So I'm going to add in the typical dog dose and beep is about a half a mil of the tincture per 20 pounds of body weight. Little Tula here, she is 20 pounds. She's going to get about half a tincture, uh, the tincture dropper. So it's about half a mil. There's our one half squirting it into our concoction. The really nice thing about having the honey as part of this concoction is that it'll make the licorice so much more palatable. Uh, the elderberry uh, isn't really sweet, it tastes all right. But I think you're gonna find with this even little concoction, the little tulip is gonna rapidly consume it. This is something that can be safely given uh, three times a day. Tula likes it, super good news. I think, yeah, and she's already coughing less than she was this morning, which is awesome. Okay. Okay, there it is, it's so good for you. That's it, there's a virus in there, we're gonna deal with that virus. Then we're gonna symptomatically make your throat feel so much better. There, good girl, you took all the licorice root, all that honey, and all that elderberry. Mmm, oh, good girl. Oh, looks like Pippi down there wants some. Oh, good girl, good girl, Tula. As I'm also not feeling so great, I've made myself the elderberry honey, honey licorice root concoction. Mm. Good for Tula, good for me. So do I feel that your pets are at risk? No, I don't. Do I think it's just a generally a good idea to make sure you're feeding them a good quality food, you're feeding them far less kibble, you're making sure they have good additional nutrients that potentially support their immune system, preventing diseases in the first place? You bet I do. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Energy Secrets on this new Chinese flu virus and what you need to know to also make sure your pets are healthy. If you've yet to do so, click up there to subscribe, click the bell down there to sign up for notifications, and then when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.